I can remember coming here back in the days A stranger in my life, I didn't belong in no place Stranded as a youth, nobody felt like I had nowhere to go Reserved frustrated through my life, but I'm back and I'm ready to roll Seasons where I humour and I'm still quite droll It's enough about me, it's all about this place Friendship, love and spirit, it's in the air you can taste Coming through that door, fresh from the train I come to relax and untangle my brain I can't articulate how these peeps have set me free It's frustrating, I feel like giving up being a wordsmith, you see This is for the people here My baby Tyra and E I love you all and I'm doing my best to succeed The Crisis House provides a home and a family for people with mental health problems who, due to those problems, haven't got a home or a family or haven't got one that can at that time cope with the situation. The place is run by people who either have themselves suffered from mental problems or are the informal carers of people with mental problems. So it is not a professional service, it's a consumer-run service. We're not trying to provide treatment, we're not trying to assess professionally, we are informal community care. We have crisis beds where people going through a mental health crisis can stay and work through it, living here in the house. But we also have a daytime drop-in which extends into the evening for people who are living in the community but need support and sanctuary during the day. Basically, I had sort of like quite a turbulent upbringing from until like I was in children's homes all that sort of rigmarole until I was probably about 16, 18, pushed out, sort of didn't have much of a clue, I was pretty wild. I sort of like... You know what I mean? It's just almost like I'd unlearned everything that I'd ever learnt with my parents and then everything was just confusion. I'd lost my mum and a few other things and I'd come here and it's just like, I was lost. I was lost, really. I'd been in, um, I'd been obviously in the, through the mental health service. I just stopped talking and stuff like that and really shut down and said a lot, a lot, of, a lot of things. I had my friends die, my mum die. A lot of earlier stuff and my, my younger brothers got adopted when I was younger. So there was a lot of things that I didn't really deal with. I came back from Amsterdam um, after a spell of working over there selling stocks and shares. I was earning a lot of money and had a huge drug habit. I came back to Wokingham and for one reason or another my parents weren't um, agreeable to having me at home. I was fine. But as that money ran out and my accommodation ran out, I became increasingly depressed um, and still had a large drug habit which I could obviously no longer afford to, to keep. I then proceeded to drink a litre of methadone. I was then obviously admitted to hospital where for a day and a half I was very, very in intensive care due to this huge opiate overdose. And after coming out, Pam still gave me support and eventually, to cut a very long story short, spent some, some of the charity's money in putting me up in a bed and breakfast and saved me from being homeless, which for a while, or a few days at least, I was sleeping outside the council offices in a sleeping bag outside the uh, heating duct to keep warm. I, I was in a terrible state then because I knew that things would really get bad and I might be evicted. In these days I don't know anything about financial help from the council, nothing about housing help, nothing about care help or anything like that. I didn't even have a, a sort of care nurse or anyone that I could sort of talk to. Three months it took me to come here and eventually I came, and eventually I spoke to Pam, and she put me in touch of all sorts of things. We all have this feeling it's a stigma, and did I want, did I want Pam to hear my story? Uh, no, I didn't really, but by talking, it helps you, and I just blurted it all out, didn't I? I just. That's a therapy for me, isn't it? To be able to talk and, and tell people. But I don't tell anyone else. I find that if I didn't have these things around me, I don't know what I would do. I really don't. 
by far the commonest diagnosis of people who come to the crisis house is depression but then you would expect that because that is in fact the commonest mental condition but we actually provide for people with schizophrenia bipolar affective disorder anxiety states obsessions the full range of mental health problems it can be social isolation it can be marital breakdown, family breakdown, people who because of their mental condition have lost jobs, uh, people who because of their mental condition have been unable to set up a normal social network. From the moment the person walks through the door, there's a feeling of not being threatened. It's like walking into Granny's parlour. They don't judge you, there's not a million forms to fill in, there's no, there's, there's no charade, there's no red tape. It's just a very friendly, come in, sit down, tell us your problems. If we can help you, we will. Um, there's no, there's, they don't attach any stigma to anything you might have been through, anything you might walk through with the door, any baggage. You, you, you could have AIDS, you could be mentally ill, you could have just come out of prison. Basically, you leave all that at the door, you walk in and you're treated with dignity as a human being and helped as such. And that's what's needed really, it's needed when you're down and you're at your lowest step, you need someone to just give you that little bit of a, the first rung on the ladder. And then if you can start making that climb up the ladder of life as it were, then um, you know, you can look on to, to greener pastures. I've started to pick up the pieces, start going out doing voluntary work, trying to help other people so that my time in the daytime was absorbed by doing other things. In fact, I didn't understand mental health. So then, after a while, when I got into, I decided to come back to Patton and I said, look, I would like to help here. Although my problem isn't, you know, over, I'd still like to help. And so 12 years ago, I came in here and I was called Mrs. Steptoe because I collected furniture for all the people that were homeless. I had a van. I didn't drive it, somebody else drove it, and we went round all the different places. I've always been a very sociable animal. I love the satisfaction that I get out of helping others. The services of this house have been invaluable. I think it's a unique service, and I think more communities around this country could do with uh, more crisis houses like this one. It's a shame that you know the NHS or the mental health services, the government, whatever you want to call it, don't provide and fund more places like this in the country because I really think they're needed. I've come back here again now and it's still like a good foundation. It's like, you know, it's, it's a solid, solid place for me. Now, I've, I've, had, I've still gone through like ups and downs and gone through my struggles and everything. But now it's just like I feel like I'm at a point where I'm ready to take on the world again. I'm, I'm ready to fight, do all my dears, just get out there, get amongst it. There's nothing that I can't achieve. That's how I feel.